for the first two hours. And uh, going to break the rules on that, though, for a couple of tracks here. i got a real special guest in the house. We're going to play a cut and uh, something brand new. I want you to check it out. And then we're going to talk to our guest. So this this is actually coming off of a CD, off a of little technology up here when we do that. And it is now 8 a.m. in your tune of WWZ, 90.7 FM in New Orleans. You're the best of all that's wonderful You're the heart that beats in me Far much more than beautiful You're the happiness I see Your touch is so warm and gentle With a heart just like a child The feeling is like nothing else When I see you smile Why I'm always right there by your side It's cause I love you And I feel the need to tell you You know it's true I'll be there to comfort you And when you need someone to lead the way I'll be there to see you through I'll be there when you celebrate The good times in your life I'll be there to share your heartache When you become my wife And when you feel unsure of what to say And you don't know what to do And if your heart ever pushes me away My love will still shine through I'll be there A patient man you'll find With an understanding heart I'll be there to share a lifetime Let's make a brand new start If you wonder why By your side It's cause I love you
WWOZ 90.7 FM in New Orleans and online at WWOZ.org. It's 8.04 here the Crescent City, and that was some brand new music from Caesar Eloy. Elwa. Elwa. My I'm Louisiana that, French you're right, names. Huh? I should know that, yeah, that's too. That's a Louisiana name. I'm a Cajun boy from home. I should have got that yeah, one, you huh? Got <laughs> but you know what we do? We twist the spellings up so bad. That's probably what threw you off. If I yeah. if, if it was the original spelling, E L O I, you may have gotten it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that track was called "Always Feel the Need," and that's a, a single right now. Yeah, that you've just recently done. Correct. And released July the twenty fourth. You got uh, who? Who's on there with you? That's Thaddeus Richard on keyboards. That's uh, Terrence Higgins mm. on drums. Uh, that's Donald Ramsey on bass, and that's Daryl Johnson on guitar, and that's no none other than the legendary Mr. James Rivers on sax, and of course myself, Caesar L.Y. on vocals. All right, and is that a song you wrote? Uh, well, I co-wrote it with a friend of mine, Lionel okay. Desdune. Okay. Um, you know, we kind of come up with this idea, and we made it happen. We've actually been working on that song since about 2009. Okay. And finally, you know, it, I got the knack on what it needed. And I called in Thaddeus Richard. Um, and this was before, I don't know if you, I don't know if you know Thaddeus. Thaddeus had gotten sick, but this was prior to his becoming ill. And we went in and created it all right there on the spot. And um, I kind of held on to it until about until 2018 and finally decided to go in and finish it so you did the you recorded it you were telling me in Esplanade yeah at Esplanade Studios on um, Esplanade Avenue Mm -hmm. and then the next move from there is Bruce Burrell the, the guy that does the mastering I mean this is a really great team here you know, from 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 es- from Esplanade to Bruce Burrell, you winning because you know they really, you know. Yeah, you were talking about the equipment and stuff. That's a oh, Lord, equipment over there. The guy's the equipment geek. <laughs> and you know, as, as a matter of fact, the two of them are equipment geeks because at one time, Bruce was Misha's go-to guy. Yeah, as it related to microphones, which is how I met Misha. I went to Bruce one day wanting to rent some U87s. And he said, man, look, go by Misha. Misha has got them, and he knows how to use them. And uh, it's it, it just a, a relationship built from that point that's just, like, super awesome. I mean, really. And it, and it makes you feel good, you know, to have a connection with people like as what came out of that, mm-hmm. but um, Misha is he likes to travel and go find the best equipment. Like the microphone we use in this instance is a Neumann U67, and it's 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 uh, vintage, and it's not something you can find anywhere. I think he found that in some foreign country, but the the thing is is a is a vocalist dream. It really is. I mean, you don't need to use much pressure. It captures every expression that comes from your voice. Mm -hmm. And without a lot of, you know, having to push. So that's one of the things I love about working with those guys. They're really into, you know, quality equipment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They've been doing a lot of good stuff out of there. I know that. Yeah, man. They're doing uh, movie scores over there. Um, I think it's the, one of the only places in this area of the country where you can actually do orchestras. And they set up for it really well. I mean, they got boots. It's an amazing place. You really I, I'd, like, I'd like to get a tour of that one day. Yeah, he would, he would definitely invite you in. I might have to he, let you set that up or help oh, me I out. I can do that, man. That's not a problem. I can do that. Every time I ride by, I ride by. I oh, do, you pass that? Oh, yeah. I ride. I ride. I, I do bicycle tours for a living. I ride by there okay. on my tours, and I look at that church, and I was like, yeah. uh, just kind of wonder yeah, what he's man. done. And I've heard so much of the work that he's produced in there. Yeah. And it's, uh, and I, yeah, I've just heard amazing Amazing things about it. Yeah, all sure. these people flying on. El- Elton John was almost in there. I think it was a scheduling issue that 
that caused that not to happen. But during Jazz Fest, I think people they were talking about he's supposed to have been in there. Hmm. There's so many people in there. Actually, I had to kind of pull strings to get in there. <coughs> Excuse me, during Jazz Fest because um, was it Jazz Fest or Essence? Essence, yeah, because you know a lot of the, like Mary J. Blige and all these groups they bought all the time to rehearse there. And then she got some recording, some rehearsing. So the guy said, man, I can't get you in here till, for two weeks. Two weeks. So I called Misha. That's the guy that owned it. said, look, man, come at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. I got you. <laughs> but, you know, they get they get busy. It's like during Jazz Fest. Sure. You got to get what you need done before that happens. So they, they are in demand. And I'm just happy that I have a really inside track relationship with them. You know what I mean? Right on, for yeah, sure. Yeah. All right. Well, the you were telling me that uh, eventually you're gonna. This is a single right now, but you're gonna. Yeah, that's the, the you're single. Gonna, you're gonna. Um, we gonna I'm gonna continue that. One. Continue. And yeah. Add some more stuff Probably and come up with a CD. Around the end of the year, I'll be finished with. The, we already got the ideas and the stuff in place, and I think around the end when a. Uh, Eight months now, so I, f- I think around the first of the year, okay, I'll be ready to max that one out. Well, now we-, we did the same with this project because with it, with the New Orleans to Paris project, we fronted with a, a single on Bourbon Street Parade, mm-hmm. and um, then a couple of months later, we did the whole thing. I kind of like the idea of introducing. Yeah, that's a old, that's a old uh, method of doing it. If you would, that's sure. the way they used to do it back in the day. Yeah. Uh, send one flag boy out, and then here come the rest of the tribe. Yeah. <laughs> Give yeah. them a little taste. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, test the waters, you know. Now, you brought me your CD that was released in 2010 called New Orleans to Paris. Yes. And uh, was that also done at Esplanade? Yeah. Well, it was the same guy, but it was before it was in, he that's moved That's right. You into, said it was in Metairie. Right. Yeah. He was Axis Studios then, but he's just, he had the same character. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? He had really good quality equipment because the microphone we used on that one is a U87. The, other one was, the, the new one was a U67. That was a U87. Now, the 87 is also a vintage mic. But it's not as high quality as that 67. Although the 87 is very high quality. Mm-hmm. But man, when you get to talking about them 67, then they got a U47. I haven't I haven't had a chance to use that one yet. Well, well, these, these, mi- well, these microphones valued. I would marry one of them. They're valued at ten, over $10,000, oh, right? Oh man, that, 16, uh, that, that 67 is valued at least $16,000. In yeah. some places, $20,000. Can't go find that in the pawn shop. No. <laughs> you're not gonna find them, and and you know they they want the, the vintage ones, not these new ones. Right. They're made of different materials, so they and then Misha knows how to take them apart and put them back together. He knows which ones to buy, cause he can take them apart and put them back together. I've watched him do that, man. This dude is an amazing cat. Hmm. But um, well, we're gonna give a listen to. Uh this track from 2010 here we're going to listen to that bourbon street parade that you just talked about yeah. you want to tell us anything about well, it you remember got to, you know that's that's a collection of a lot of cats man uh, i think that may be the first time all of these guys did something collectively like that you got leroy jones on there you got mm-hmm. wendell brunis you got um jamal williams you got doc paulin hurling um, you got hurling riley you got um, who else? Daddy. Chris Severin, Thaddeus Richard. I mean, it's a gang of people participated in that. And I really felt good about the idea of us collectively doing something, you know. And it's and the thing about so many people being involved in one issue like that is it's got to be edited and it's got to be clean. Mm-hmm. Uh, other than that, you had people stepping on each other's toes. But in this case, when you're dealing with that level of musicians... They know not how to not do that. So. Right. And so these tracks were done live for the most part? Or? No, we did those at, at in studio. But I'm saying, were they, the band was all together? Or were well, we, was it separated out? the thing out? was, um, I had to do the rhythm section first. Okay. Because, you know, these guys are globe trotters. Right. You yeah, know, hard to get like them all together. Like Herlin, for example, uh, the, the, the morning we did the Bourbon Street Parade, he had just come back from somewhere on the other side of the planet. 
I mean, literally, on right. the side of the planet. <laughs> and I felt so bad because I had him in there like 9 o'clock in the morning. And I'm saying, man, look, bro, let's let's get this done so we can get Herlin out of here. So he's sitting on the sofa taking him a nap. Man, when we woke Herlin up, he was ready. <laughs> he was ready. He said, man, you know, this is what I do. And he got on them drums, and you would think, you know, he was the most rested person in the house. But again, because all of these guys travel so much, particularly during the summer months, I had to kind of, and I, I, I definitely wanted who I wanted. So if I got to wait till when the Bruners come back next week, well, then I'm going to wait. Right. Um, and Chris was running with the Neville brothers at the time. So, you know, the, once we got the rhythm now, then we can put everything else in place. Mm-hmm. So. But so that took us. It took me like nine months to do that. All right. But I just wanted that collection of musicians. All right. Well, look. Thank you for getting up man, early. Thank you so much for in. allowing us to come up. And uh, I truly appreciate. I'll be that. looking for you uh, toward the end of the year, or the first yeah, of the year, yeah, when you yeah, get this yeah, all yeah. done and yeah, bring it gonna, up we here. And we'll, finish, we'll get it done. We'll continue uh, this again, conversation. I, I, I truly thank you for having us up, man. You're quite welcome, man. I, yeah. Uh, and again, I'm talking to Caesar Elwa. Elwa. Yeah, Elwa. Yeah. I don't know why I stumbled on that, but I did. Got it that time. And. Uh, he we opened it up with his new cut, Always Feel the Need, and which will be maybe a few months down the road on a new C D he's gonna bring up here to us. Now we're gonna listen to a C D that came out in twenty ten called New Orleans to Paris and we're gonna listen to yeah, classic that's my, that's my classic that's my New Orleans tune. Signature right there. And uh well, thank you again, and let's get a little Bourbon Street thank Parade. You Y'all get us. dancing with this one. Now, this should get you moving on a Monday morning. You tune to WWZ 90.7 FM in New Orleans. Yeah. 
Day. Wild French tuxedo jazz band. 